Watkins, who was one of the Invisible Girls, John Cooper Clark's backing band, worked a lot with Martin Hammond. Um, Steve did the soundtrack for the Tea Machine, and it was coming up to the 30th anniversary last year, and we decided to kind of reissue it, basically. Went back to uh, the soundtrack, which was the Tea Machine dub, which was the soundtrack to the film, and 30 years ago we'd released it as a single with I Married a Cool Figure from Salford, which is a song that Mike had written. Um, how did that come about, Mike? Uh, I think it was at Christmas party, wasn't it? I, I used to do a bit of stand-up stuff, and we had a Christmas party at the film and video workshop at the time, and I just worked it out in the afternoon, it was a kind of... You know, uh, the, Monster from Outer Space telling her story, more or less. John liked it. By the time we finished the tea machine, we had a bit of money left over for promotion. So we put out a double-sided single with the, the uh, theme running through the tea machine on one side and I'm a the coat figure on the other. So originally Mike, originally Mike played the John Cooper Clark voice on there. When I went back to revisiting it, revisit it, Mike did a great job, but he never sounded like John Cooper Clark, even though he few, filled a good few people. So I kind of went back, and uh, in the 30 years intervening, I've been a sound editor on a lot of kind of top end TV drama. So I kind of, I'm, I'm quite a good sound editor. And uh, we went back and we were able to cut out all of Mike's original Clark, Clark Clarky stuff. And I've got somebody else in called Neil Bell, who uh, does a very, very good impersonation of John Cooper Clark, to revoice it. And then we thought, well, we might, you know, always, it was made in the days before MTV and everybody kind of making a, a music video. <coughs> so we thought, well, it might be a good opportunity to get some of the old team back together who made the team machine. And um, over a couple of days, we shot around Salford with two actors that uh, we auditioned for it, Tam Hinton, who's <coughs> going out in the Oldham Coliseum tonight on his one-man show. And uh, Rachel Priest, who plays Cathy, she's uh, in Holby City, I think, these days, so she couldn't make it tonight. And uh, we had, like I say, we had a couple of days filming in Salford. We got a team of, of people came down. And we. You know, we used a lot of green screens, so we were able to put animation in at the background. So, in a way, because we had the final track, we was able to we were able to kind of picture picture board it the way I've probably never done with a film before, and actually think about what bit, bits were going to be envisioned. Let's have a little bit of a storyline to it. And uh, I, I'm, I'm sort of quite pleased the way it's sort of turned out. A lot of the references are kind of 30 years ago about, um, you know, John Cooper Clark was the Bard of Salford. Um, but in kind of quite a short space of time, he kind of ended up selling sugar puffs. And it was kind of a bit sad, really, that somebody of John's talent kind of gone, really, from, you know, doing some fantastic poetry yeah, yeah. to kind of. So I think the, the film was really kind of response to that, that what happens with a lot of people, once they kind of make it, it's kind of bye-bye Salford, bye-bye Manchester, bye-bye Liverpool, and you kind of never really go back there. Not that you would imagine kind of John Lennon living in some area of, on the Wirral, because it just wouldn't happen. But uh, anyhow, that was the kind of the notion a little bit behind it, of, of kind of what, what happens when people do become famous and uh, that's a music connection with the roots. Interest with John Cooper Clark? Well, I, I, the original footage of John in there was from a kind of abortive project that I'd shot back in the early 80s that was for a kind of back projection um, cinema kind of thing for John's live performances. We never actually got off the ground. So I was left with that footage as well and thought, you know, kind of the little story that he's watching himself mm. In the, the things the you know enabled us to kind of do that and incorporate those different yeah. uh, those different layers. It's, it's a good contrast to having the uh, the old kind of almost super eight type of footage 
place with the digital and the uh, green screen as well. Yeah, well, that's so, uh, Well, I, I think it's the worst. I mean, there's so many things have opened up now that you can make a film and get it up on YouTube, can't you? Uh, whereas when we made the tea machine, we had several venues like this, didn't we? Uh, three or four. We got we got bits of it on television, little snippets. Uh, I, th I, think the I think the difference these days is, um, as our friend um, was showing before, he was kind of DOP, editor, camera, uh, you know, doing everything. And I think in a way, although that's kind of liberated and meant that you can have individual filmmakers able to kind of pick up the skills and express themselves, it also means that maybe sometimes you miss out on that kind of team effort of people contributing. I mean, I mean kind of... Um, it can, I was I was down at uh, Media City today, the Move On Up event, because I my day job is working for Vector, which is a trade union, and today we did this Move On Up event for the black and ethnic filmmakers to meet commissioning editors and programme makers, and basically try and do something about the kind of uh, the lack of um, you know people of colour in in the television industry, and. There was a guy there doing a self-shooting course, and we were talking about the kind of pressures that this can bring to people, that they kind of, they end up having to kind of, they've got to shoot it, and then at the end of the day, they've got to download the memory cards, that's an extra two hours on your day, you've then got to drive back. And, and all those things kind of put pressure on, and it's always been my view that, you know, if you've got a, somebody who's a camera operator, the way, the way Martin is, and has got an incredible particular talent, then you want them to do it because as a director, it takes a lot of weight off your shoulder.